it in a talk, make you talk come again. Hey, hey, talk come again. This like make you walk, you they find allergy. Hey, hey, you they find allergy. If you are a fan of Nigerian Twitter, you know that the musician Files has been under a lot of criticism for his songs and his um, outcry, so to speak, about commercial sex work. People have said consistently beating down on those women is bullying because they have less power, they're responding to a society that will not take care of its women, and they're just trying to survive. Today I am talking to Gift. Gift is a commercial sex worker. I am not talking to her as an investigation, as a research paper, as a part of a news report. I'm talking to Gift as a human being. I want to understand what it means to be a sex worker today in Nigeria how she got here, how she stays here, and where she goes from here. I want to know how she got here, why she stays here, and where she goes from here. Why did you decide to come and talk to me today? I felt so... A lot of people out there mm -hmm. are still victims of what I passed through. Yeah. And from my own story, mm -hmm. they'll be able to learn one or two things mm -hmm. and to take some decisions mm -hmm. on their own instead of meeting mm -hmm. people for an advice of what to do. Right. Can you tell me what you've gone through? Tell me. All right. Six years ago, mm -hmm. I lost my mom. I'm sorry about Through that. a few illness, March 2013, she died. Okay. And after her death, I was like, where do I start from? Mm -hmm. Who do I go to? Mm -hmm. From a polygamous home, nobody to her. Seeking for an admission then. Luckily, I got the admission, no happy hand. And um, along the line, I fall in love with a particular guy called Sunday. That period while we were together, he showed me love and I show him the same love too. But along the line, something happened. He was like requesting for sex then. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, if truly you love me, you need to be patient. Was this in Benue? No, in Lagos. In Lagos, okay. Then he was like, okay, I should just allow him mm -hmm. that I will feel his promise. Mm -hmm. I insisted and I said no. But it happened one day. That 2013, it was during my birthday. I went there and um, I was giving a wine. I drank the wine, but knowing to me, there was something in the wine already. I slept off. When I woke up, I was, it was just like me struggling to wake up from the dream. Finally, I woke up and I saw myself. I was already messed up. I cried and um, there was nothing I could do actually. Because if I should tell anybody, they will ask you what took you there. After a few months, two to three months, I discovered I was pregnant. Actually, I didn't even know myself that I was pregnant. It was people that started saying that, why is your body like this? I had to go for tests because I didn't see my, my period was just like, it will come and it will just come for a day and it will cease. After running the test, I was confirmed to be three months pregnant. I called him and told him. I'm pregnant. He said, okay. That was all he said that day. We keep communicating on phone. I was expecting him to say something about it. He wasn't saying anything. So I decided to pay a visit. I went there that very day. We saw, we chatted, we discussed at length. He was like, okay, this place I'm staying, my landlord is asking us to quit. He has given us quick notice. I don't know what to do. I don't have a lovely one. I told him I had some money with me then. He said, how much? I told him I have 30,000. He gave me an account number to send the money. Now with that 30,000, added to the money he has with him, it will be enough to get 
another accommodation, which I sent in the morning. Few days later, should be up to two to three weeks. I discover he's no longer calling me the way he used to. He has not been doing this way before, but suddenly the character changed. changed. I decided to go there, which he did that very day. So I discovered the door was open. I was like, who do I ask? I stood there for some minutes. I don't know what to do. I started calling the number. The number was not going. I had to like come back to those ones I saw outside. I was asking them, please, so so person is what I'm looking for. They say, hey, they know now, he has packed from here. I was so disappointed. I was like, packed from here. And I'm not away. I just don't know what to do. My tears drop. I had to like go back home. I cried, I cried, and cried. I don't know what to do. I don't have a mother to tell me, okay, do this. For days, I couldn't eat. All I could do was cry. Mm -hmm. Oh, then I had a friend. I went to Blessing. I told Blessing, this is what I'm passing through. She said, that she, she has been telling me all these guys. That's how they used to do. But I said, I love him, I love him, he will marry me. What well, end is now? can't find him again. She now asked me, what will you do? Will you keep the pregnancy? I said, keep the pregnancy that I don't know where the guy stay. I don't know any of his family. Even if I give birth to the child, mm -hmm. who will I tell the child? Or who will I show to the child that this is your father? Mm -hmm. And she said, okay, if that be the case, that means I need to go for DRC. I asked her, what is DRC? She explained to me and said, oh, we need to go to the hospital or to a nurse so that I will evacuate the pregnancy. At first, I was scared. Different thoughts came on me. I was like, what if I die? Mm -hmm. But she kept encouraging me that she don't worry. But the challenge I was having was, now I've decided to do the abortion. No money for me to even go to the hospital for the abortion. She had to help me raise the money. When she raised the money, we had to like go to a nearby nurse because the money is not even enough to go to the hospital for the abortion because the pregnancy was more than three months already. We went to the nurse, the nurse was like, she will collect 30,000. We begged and begged, she agreed to collect 17,000, which she lent me the money. And the abortion was done. It was so, so painful. So painful, so painful. Mm. The abortion was so painful. But the question here now is, how do I pay her the 17,000 I borrowed for her? She keep asking me, when am I giving her the money? I don't have any business doing. I don't have a job doing. How do I raise the 17,000 mm -hmm. to pay her? I just have to like, show me this, the road to the business you are doing. Mm -hmm. You are doing fine. Show me how you started. She was like, can you do what I'm doing? I was like, tell me, I will do it. She insisted, she was like, me and you will sign an agreement that if I tell you, you will do it. I was like, agreement. I was like, okay, bring your paper, bring your Bible, let me sign. Anything you tell me, I will do. She told me I'm a sex worker. As at first, I shouted, I was like, wow, are you sure? That is what you do for a living. Ah, I can't do it though. I told her I cannot do it. She was like, ah, you signed the agreement though. That very day, I left her place with annoyance. I was like, no, I can't do it. The moment I told her I can't do it and I left, she started pressurizing me for her money. Each time she see me on the road, she talks to me anyhow. So I had no option. I had to like go back to her, okay, I'm ready. And that was how I found myself in sex work today. Were you aware when this thing happened with the man, the guy that drugged you? Because that means he must have drugged you and must have put something. Were you aware that what he did was rape? Yes. So even that time you knew that this was real? Yes, yes, I knew it was real. This, if this man had said, look, okay, let's take care of the child, you would have stayed with him? Yeah. Because, there's, because you had no other choice? Yes. Why couldn't you talk to your father? Oh, like I said earlier, I'm from a polygamous home. Mm. And uh, my mom happened to be the first wife. An issue came up before mm. she left a matrimonial mm. home. Right. And when that happened, you know, for another woman coming into the family, you can't expect that father to give you, I can't, he can't even give you 50% because your mother is no longer in the home. So I felt going to him, telling him, there is nothing he will do about it. Mm -hmm. Rather he will tell me, eh, that's the life you choose to live. 
So that is why I decided mm. not to even go to him and tell him anything. Had you done things before then that made you feel like this is how he's going to respond? Oh, yes, because there was a time he went to work and um, my stepmother cooked food. Mm. She was like, our children ate the food. She gave me Gary to drink and I was the one to still go and watch those place. So when they came back, I reported the issue. She didn't say mm. anything. Right. right. So since then, I felt the love is not there. It's not there. And of course, you couldn't talk. You couldn't talk to your stepmother because oh. she was obviously. Um, so can somebody get a, a tissue for her, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, um, can we continue? Can, okay. uh, thank you. Whenever you want us to stop, just let me know. Yeah. What year was this? It was 2013. This is seven years ago. Yeah. That when Nigerians treat women who talk about that they've been raped by men, do you think anything has changed? It does not change. At all? At all. I don't think it has changed because rape keeps going on daily. Mm -hmm. So we said, uh, why do you dress this way? Dressing that way does not make you rape a person. Mm. You request for sex and the person is not giving you sex. Does not mean you should rape the person. Mm. It has not reduced at all. To so me, you. it's increased. And even the judgment, it has increased in yeah. your perspective. And even the judgment of women and young girls when they say, this man raped me, this man raped me. And people say, people what are you wearing? Yes. yes, people condemn them a lot. That's Every still continuing. Yes, they were like, why do you go there? Some people tell you, why do you go there? Mm. Mm. When they call you, why did you say you are not going? So when you started, when you this friend introduced you to this business, you left your father's place. Yeah. Where did you go to? Go to a hotel? Yes. Right. Was that where you was your friend in a hotel? Yes. So when you were going to meet her, were you going to meet her in that hotel? No, she had a private house. As a then, mm -hmm. I was going to her private house to meet her. Mm -hmm. But now that I have agreed to do what she wants me to do in order to raise money to, to pay, pay her, her yeah. and in order to take care of myself, mm -hmm. She has to, she's still the one that raised money for me to rent the hotel. The play, right, to rent in to the hotel. To rent in the hotel. Okay, why wasn't she in the hotel? She was staying in the hotel. But, but she had a private okay, house. Okay, because she had enough money to yes, afford yes, to separate yes. her life. Right. So you think that both of you were stuck in the same problem? You know, I've come across this issue that somebody said, ah, all of them, I did all the same thing. Mm -hmm. They like money too much. That's why they don't want to do anything with anyway, their life. Yeah. Mm. Not until you ask somebody questions, you don't know so you why know, the, person the person is there. Is. Everybody is there for different reasons. Yeah. So keep there because they lost their parents, nobody to help. They have yeah. younger ones yeah. to take care of. And they just have to like raise something to take care of those ones. They yeah. have to find themselves there yeah. to make sure those ones are okay. They sacrifice themselves. Yeah. Why some are there because this thing, I like it. Yeah. I want to satisfy myself. Mm. So you can't just you can't judge until you know, judge until story. You know the person's story. Right. I've heard people say that it is better to beg than to do commercial sex work. What do you say to that? Well, I can for me, I can't beg mm. because you go into the streets begging people all sorts of insults will be given to you. Sex is a work. Right. Okay. Yeah. You are paying me for the service I'm giving to right. you. I don't know if you, you, was, you were telling me earlier, before the show started, that you were on social media, but not, a lot, not active on Twitter. Mm -hmm. But if you're on Twitter, this musician files, and he, he has done a song or two or three songs. About, I think he, the people say he has a very passionate hatred. You know, for some reason, he sings a lot about sex work. And a lot of people, like activists, have attacked him to say, you know, stop. So it's like, oh, this is immorality. This is moral degrad deprivation, so to speak. I think, I can't speak for him, but I, I met Faust. I think he's doing it from a good place. Um, but then if Faust was saying that in front of you now, you know, and Faust was saying, look, I think that your work is shameful. I think you should stop. I think it is bad. I think, you know, this is part of the things that are destroying Nigeria society. What would you say to Faust? Well, I'll ask him, how is the Nigeria helping the people in the country? Mm -hmm. Because, there are lots of people that even the government themselves mm. are rendered homeless. Mm. There are lots of people that they've destroyed their home, destroyed their lives, destroyed their family. How do you want them to survive? How do you want them to take care of their children? Tell me about sex work. So you, you, are you still into sex work? Yeah. Okay. This is in Lagos. Yeah? How does it work? 
What are the what's the nature? It all depends on it, an individual. Okay. Like my I don't do mine by standing on the streets okay. or on the road. Once mm -hmm. you give me a call or you chat me up, mm -hmm. we talk. When we come to an agreement, it's either you are coming to my place or I'm coming over to your place. You pay me for my services and I go. I do you how did you get your number? Oh, you know there are there are different ways. Right. Like I'm on WhatsApp. Right. I come on Facebook. Right. I have friends that we chat with. And there so are some the people that we connect right. each other. Yeah. Like there are some people that will meet you that will say, You are my friend. I can't mm. go out with you. Just mm. give me somebody. So it's easier for me to just forward the number of that friend to the person. That's it. Okay. Mm. So that is how. How long have you been doing this? Oh, six years now. Six years. Um, how dangerous is it? We keep hearing about how dangerous mm. sex work is. There are some people that will come into the hotel, mm -hmm. they will rape you without using condom. You don't know if they have one sickness or the other one virus in their body. Mm -hmm. So we will come, our robbers will come, they will beat you up, they will rape you, collect whatever you have and they will go. You've mentioned rape twice, so that means it seems like this is something that continues to happen. Yes, it happens. Did you deal with this again after, in the times of doing this? Yes. After that first one, it happened to me the second time in the hotel. When boys came in to rob. Once they come to your room, you don't have anything to give them. They rape you, collect mm. your phone. Mm. That was how they just did from one room to another and they left. Are you still in the hotel or you moved away from the hotel? I stay in the hotel but I have a private So you have a private, like the other friend? And I'm assuming your daughter knows her father. Yeah. The father met you in the line of this work. Yes. Was it a planned pregnancy? Yes. Right. Are you in a relationship with the father? Yes. So why, so why do you still feel alone if you have a relationship with her father? Oh, because what happened in the first relationship mm -hmm. makes me not to trust. trust. I have that child because at least I want to have a, a child, child in my life. So that's trust. I believe the way that one left, mm, this he can one also so leave. leave one day. So. That's profound. Um, and again, we can stop this interview at any time. Any time we can stop it. Um, what do you think about men? I know you've said you don't trust men. But what, yeah. And what would you say to men? How would you want men to be? Like, what would men need to do? How would they need to change to be better for you to trust, for you to even see them, men, in a positive light? Okay. Well, I would like to tell our men to change from their evil ways. Mm. They should stop raping our girls. Mm. Raping them is not the best way to express their love, mm. but to to make themselves happy. Not the love that once you leave their presence, they'll start saying evil mm. about you. They should try and help our ladies, help our women, so that they will know that, yes, mm. we have. I have somebody beside me. Mm. There are things they do that make you, if you see them, you say, this one I'm mad. Mm. But there are things they will do. Women will felt, yes, with this person beside me, I'm okay. Mm. But if they are the type that beat women, mm. you rape them, you don't, take up your responsibility, then who are you then? Mm. It makes me, the woman, to look down on them. We felt mm. it's better you are not here yeah. than be here doing nothing. Right. Your daughter, does she know the work that you do? What will happen when she starts asking? I think before she comes to that stage, I'll quit. Will you? Yeah. Why? What if you don't, ha what if you don't have enough money at that time? I think I will. Are you you're working towards that? Yeah. Right. Okay. If your daughter somehow found out, somehow, what would you tell her? I'll give her my reasons. Mm -hmm. Make her to understand the mistake which I did yeah. for her not to find herself in such. So you talked about rape in the hotels and it is and I think we're telling my producers that one of the most important lessons you've learned is to protect yourself. But how does a person protect themselves in such a situation? It's not exactly legal. There's security risks. It's, you know, how does a person 
Okay. Protect themselves. Now, there are lots of uh, girls that will stay together in the hotel. At the end of the day, some will come up, maybe in one area or the other, you get to understand that this one don't carry HIV. Mm. Probably it happened during one of the rape. Mm. It happened maybe during risky sex, mm -hmm. maybe when they have sex, they don't use condom, things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. But now I've been able to realize that, let's assume that when that guy make love with me, then he used condom. Mm -hmm. Definitely I wouldn't have been pregnant. Mm -hmm. But let's assume that I was able to know one, one or two things about condom, how to use it, and things mm -hmm. like that, then mm -hmm. I would have not even keep resisting him, telling him to hold on, hold on. Maybe mm -hmm. I would have just, okay, make use of a condom. Mm -hmm. I did, but now I, 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 I think I have heard of some drugs that you can equally use, and you can be HIV positive. Mm -hmm. So I think with that, if I can have those drugs around me, and so I'm don't taking have them, them, I have. Okay. If I am taking those drugs, okay. definitely, even if rape, mm -hmm happen or do it to me because I've been taking it. Mm. At least I know I am still 95% protected, protected at least. Right. So these NGOs are actually helping you. Yeah. yeah, have they helped you in any particular way? Yes. Right, yeah. Because it's through NGO I've been able to know of the drugs that can prevent right. one from getting HIV. From getting HIV. In, in the past six years, what do you say are the worst things about sex work? What have been the worst things that have, that you've seen about it? Well, the worst thing I've seen so far is you staying for some days, puzzling, using your body to get money, and at the end of the day, you will end up using more than half of the money for the hotel. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't pay, mm -hmm. they will lock your door. And once your door is locked, you remain outside, and you have no other place to go. Cool. Are you going to the club? Sometimes it's that is at high risk because mm. police by raid. And when police raid, mm. the kind of insults they give. Mm. At the end of the day, if you don't take time, they will even they, they themselves that the police officers they will they will sex you, and they will give you a dime, and you still have to pay yourself. Right. So the police officers that arrest so many women. Yes. Rape they, them because yes, without the consent yes, of the women. Yes. Right, and they don't and pay. And so they would even tell you, you don't get money to to bail yourself. Oh yeah, two, three of them will have sex with you. Oh my God! For you to be released. Mm. Because you know, in Nigeria, we like testimony. We like, oh, I was, I was in this. I'm no longer in this. But this story, the reason why I wanted to tell this story, that this is not a story of where I was in this. This is a story of, this is my life. Yeah. So people say, well, there's no. What's the lesson here? What is the message? Because you said you wanted to do this for people, other young women like yourself. What is the message you are now sending to them? Okay, the message I'm sending now is this. The young girls out there should learn to be very careful. Right. Not all guys that tell you sweet words, mm. that tell you those words that you love to hear, really tell you from the depth of, of their, their heart. heart. They tell you because of what they want to get from you. Mm -hmm. And once they get it, they are gone. gone. They are gone. So you need to be very, very careful. If you have people that can help you, focus on your education. Mm -hmm. Help yourself. Mm -hmm. Read your books. One day you'll be creating life. Mm -hmm. Going around guys, moving around with them, it's not the best. Right. And finally, what is the future now? You know. You've been in this for six years. You said if you had an option, you would not do it. Where, where do you see your life going from here? Wow, from here I see my life going to a better place because with this level so far, mm -hmm. I used this opportunity to talk to young girls mm -hmm. that are coming up. When I see a girl of 16, 17 years, Coming up and he's trying to like now nah, becoming a big girl. I do call the attention and said, Come, you are still a small girl. Mm. This is what you are supposed to do. This is what you are not supposed to do. Mm. I still try my best to encourage them, talk to them in order for them not to fall the same victim mm. that I fall to. Mm. Because then I felt if I've been able to see someone, maybe to put me through right from the beginning and tell me that 
This age you are, guys will deceive you. They will tell you, tell you this. Oh, don't answer them. Maybe mm. by through those words, I wouldn't have fall into it. Yes. The only mm. thing I heard there was, if you allow any man touch you, you go get belly. Mm. So I was always like, is it touching like this? When we become pregnant, I I was not enlightened. Mm. But when it happened now. Yeah, you didn't know, but all, so, the, all the fear didn't prepare you for this moment. Exactly. Yeah. So now I felt around me, in my house, even in my hotel where I stay, when I see small, small girls, especially those ones that are orange, things like that. Yeah, see the small girl, they will deceive you and give you belay now, you will know. So mm. I still use that opportunity to talk to, to, talk them, to them. So that tomorrow they will be able to say, yes, somebody told me mm. before I didn't listen. But in my own case, nobody told me. Mm. So that was why I fell in it. And that's why you're doing this interview. Thank you. Thank you for telling me this story with clarity, firmness, and dignity. Thank you. May your troubles Oh, man.